today, I am here with Catherine, who is an online fitness sober conscious coach. Uh, and today, we're going to be talking about sober dating. Catherine, thanks for being here today with me. I am so excited to get into this topic with you. <laughs> I'm so excited too. You know how excited I am. <laughs> Absolutely. So, what we're going to do, guys, is listen for anyone who wants more of this content, who wants to watch uh, Catherine's social media accounts, you can find them in the pinned comment below. So, you guys will find her TikTok there, her Instagram handle there, all that information in the pinned comment. Now, Catherine, there's a few things we're going to talk about today, but I've watched some of your TikTok videos and I know the ones that always seem to go most viral are the ones that really talk about dating and active addiction. And I would say they're a pretty good example of what not to do when it comes to dating. So I think if we could start there and then we'll kind of get into what sober dating looks like and what we can do. So tell me a little bit about dating and active addiction. How did you get there? What was that like? And just a little bit about that. So first off, before I ever talk about, you know, dating and addiction, I do want to say it is not funny, um, but I will say I'm in a place where I can be a spokesperson for this because I have done the healing work around the shame and the guilt, um, you know, from dating and addiction. So, you know, this is serious and it's very, very painful. It was a very painful experience for me. But I will say that there is freedom on the other side. So <laughs> um, I just really want to it's, it's very true. There is freedom. Um, so, you know, my story, I started drinking at 14. Um, I spent many, many, many years. This was the thing for me. So, you know, as a child, there was a lot of, um, abandonment in my home. So I kind of would abandonment and neglect a lot. My dad was a, an alcoholic, you know, there's just a lot of chaos. So I would say my first addiction is fantasy addiction, where I would actually um, check out of my body and go into la la land to feel safe. And I would create like fantasies. Um, and a lot of them dealt with men. So, um, you know, carrying that, you know, into seriously drinking and, you know, um, active addiction, every time I drank, it would lead to something with a guy. So, you know, my whole, I always thought I needed someone else, a guy to be happy. So having that belief and then going into addiction, you know, that's what I, I always did. I would get drunk. I would, you know, try to find a guy, but dating, like I tried, I really, really, really tried to be like the nice girl and like go on a date with a guy. Um, but I would black out before I got there. I would blackout while I was there, you know, the one, the one video that went extremely viral, um, was, you know, me going to beautiful Soho house in New York city. I'm blacked out at Soho house. I'm screaming. I'm falling on top of a parked bicycle. Um, you know, many stories like that. I would wake up, you know, not knowing where I was. Most of them I would sleep with, um, and then waking up and having shame. And then the worst, the worst thing was I would get re-drunk again and then call them like, ton a ton a ton and you know what sometimes I would even meet guys on dating apps and they didn't even know me and they gave me their number and I'd call them a hundred times like uh -huh. crazy but you know I the reason I don't have shame around this is because now I've done a lot of spiritual work and a lot of work in recovery in this area that I was doing the best I could with the resources that I had available at the time so at it sounds time. like when you were dating an active addiction a lot of the dating had to do with just trying to, I don't know what the word would be, appease that person or like you were looking for that person to like you, like you, like you, not so much about what you actually wanted. Is that, that sounds accurate, right? Based yes. On so, you know, it's so funny because looking now what, you know, when I date and things, it's like, I'm literally like getting to know them to see if I like them back then didn't care what you look like, didn't care if you were a good or bad person. My mission was to get you to like me. I would do anything. I would do anything. I would sure. dress differently. I would act differently. I would say different things. I would lie. I would say, you know, I just crazy. Um, I would do anything to get them to like me. Anything. And it sounds... Um, and it sounds like that has, as you mentioned earlier, a lot more. And I'm sure this was probably part of your, your healing process and whatever recovery process to get you where you are today. It sounds like it was a lot more than just alcohol. It had to do with the trauma, the abandonment, the, 
a, any number of other things, which is a usually a very important part part of someone's like sobriety journey or whatever you want to call it, recovery, whatever. Um, that's that's really interesting. Okay, so you had a lot of not good experiences dating an active addiction. Did you have any good experiences? Was there any positives that you took away from dating? Was there ever a meaningful relationship or like a lesson learned or yeah, was there anything that you took away from it? Well, I will say this, every experience of my life, you find clarity. So every experience was good for me, even if it was bad, because it was so painful enough for me to change. But there was one particular, um, so here's the thing, you know, like I was speaking before, um, my first addiction, I was, is fantasy addiction. And there, there's so many programs. It's amazing. Um, if you actually look for, you know, healing in this stuff and people don't even know what I'm, people don't even know that is a thing. Um, I didn't know that was a thing until someone showed it to me. I was like, Oh my God, that's me. Um, I would check out and go into fantasy land that someone, a man was going to come save me. So when I was in an active addiction, like I was looking for someone to come save me. And so my dark, 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 dark part of my addiction where it was pills and, you know, drinking every day, it was very, very toxic layers on layers. Um, I actually met someone who would have been a savior and he practically saved my life. Um, I moved to a different country, um, with him. He took care of me. Um, we did have a beautiful relationship at the beginning, but here's the thing, guys, you know, the first, the beginning of relationships, if it's built on someone taking care of someone, it's not going to work out. You know, it doesn't end good. Um, because you know, what kind of happened is that I became my own self and then he didn't like that. Um, but that's a whole nother video, but you know, he, he, during that, he really, really, um, he really did kind of save me. He built this confidence in me and then I got the confidence and then he was like, couldn't handle it. Um, but it was extremely meaningful for me now. So now when you look back at relationships, you know, you see your part and all of my experiences, I always look at my part. There is always a part that I've done that I shouldn't do and carry into my current relationship was putting way too many expectations on him. You know, he was very toxic to me, very extremely, but there was, I had a part in things. Um, and now I see that relationship as something I can look at and be like, okay, from this experience, I know I don't want this. And that is not what I'm going to have moving forward. Two people, he has his own thing. I have my own thing. We grow, but it can't be like this. It won't work. It just won't work. And that's mm-hmm. codependency. I and was love just addiction. gonna say, is that codependency? Because a lot of yes. people with addiction got that going. Absolutely. Well, I mean, that's you know, parental roles put on a child. They are completely, uh, completely abandon themselves. So that's kind of how codependency goes winds up whole nother studying. topic uh-huh yeah i would imagine <laughs> that's a whole nother video topic okay yes so that's all right so yeah you took certain things from those past relationships said i don't want this going forward which brings me to my next thing now going and that's the topic of sober dating when someone's getting sober whether they're quitting alcohol weed pills whatever it might be that person's quitting do you think there's like a specific point? Cause sometimes they'll say like, Oh, don't date in early sobriety. Like at what point would you think it is for a person to, to be good to start dating? Do you think that's different for everyone? Like, I think, you know, the biggest thing um, from my experience is that the best time to start dating is when you feel secure in yourself that, you, like I said, you don't need someone else to be happy because, you know, if you need someone to be happy, you need to use them. And that's manipulation instead of it's not real true love. You know, it's like, I need you to do this. So I'm OK. Um, I think, you know, that's really hard for people to wrap their head around um, because society is kind of like, I mean, like, listen to all those songs. It's like, I need you or I'm going to die. It's like crazy. Um, another topic. But I think for people, when they feel secure in, you know, areas of their life, they should start dating. I'm not saying be perfect, but from my experience, you know, the first year and a half of sobriety, I did date. I completely abandoned myself, Ah. lost everything. 
Um, you know, I, it, it was the same thing with that. Like the love addiction stuff is like, I need him to like me for me to be okay. And then, you know, I got him and then it's like, now I have to be this perfect person to keep him. And I completely drained everything, you know, everything of myself, um, moved to Miami, left the relationship, never looked back. And it, that also was a beautiful experience for me because that actually brought me into a place where now I'm like, oh my gosh, I cannot abandon myself. I can't do that again. It's so painful. I looked different. Like mm-hmm. I completely changed. Um, and now, you know, it's, you just have to feel okay. Not, I need that person, if that makes sense. So it, it, it does, because even then you, you were sober at that point while you were dating. So you were running into, and I think you mentioned this earlier in a previous conversation we had, and maybe this is a good thing to talk about. It sounds like you were facing some of the same challenges that you had dating sober that you were facing when you were dating intoxicated. So like, it sounds like getting sober didn't necessarily fix (laughs) all those challenges. And you kind of already told me about this earlier. So I'm not like, you know, for people, yeah. I, I didn't just pull that out of my, yeah, you know, he did, but, but you know why I love this, ter- the term sober conscious. Cause I believe that sobriety is not just about alcohol. I like, you know, I've told you like alcohol was a symptom for me. So my first addiction was they say sex and love addiction. Sure. Um, that would have been my first addiction. And I just, you know, I feel like there's the, when people like, uh, medically they say sex and love addiction, sure. but there's so much shame around it, but it has nothing to do with sex. Um, and it's definitely not love. Um, it's the validation and the approval. And, you know, it's the same thing that happens when you drink, wh- like when you get that validation, you get the high and then you get the hangover. It's crazy. Do you know why? Because I went completely no contact with guys for four months in my recovery. Um, didn't date, no sexual, nothing. And mm-hmm. I felt physical withdrawals because when you have lived such a long time of getting and just seeking validation, not having that anymore. It's a big thing. You're going to withdraw from that. That makes perfect sense. That's wild because I'm thinking about your experience and it's like, this could relate to so many other people. Sober conscious dating wasn't just about a uh, physical substance, alcohol, no, coke, that's a pill. Why I like created Th- this term because I didn't know what else to call where it. sober conscious comes from. There's a much different level of awareness about more than just one thing, more than just a substance. And you actually that- said the perfect word awareness. Yeah. Oh, that's really cool because you just opened my eyes to some things that I think are pretty fascinating. Okay. So now that we got that, so like this starting to have this awareness, cause yeah, someone might be watching this and might be like, Oh crap. My only problem isn't weed. Maybe there's some other stuff I need to address. And maybe that's why someone quit smoking weed stuff still isn't going well in their dating or things. Maybe some of this other stuff hasn't been addressed now with that being said, okay, that's a whole complicated thing to unpack <laughs> on a simpler note. You probably got some good tips for someone who's starting off in the dating world, right? Like we're in the sober dating world. What are some tips for some people that are just maybe getting back into dating or thinking about, hey, I think I'm at that point in my sobriety where I might start with that again. Do you got some like basic advice pointers I have for people? Amazing ones. Um, number one, day dates. Um, day dates. huge day dates. Um, from my experience, like, you know, when I was dating in sobriety before I went into like the celibacy thing, um, I would go on dates at night and, you know, I couldn't get to know the person and I would go to the nightclub and I was like trying to be this nightclub girl and it's not me. And then I would invite them on a day date and they'd be like still drunk. So I'm like, okay, day dates, um, huge. And then, um, say always before the date, um, that you are sober, you do not need to give them everything I uh, like the reason I know this is like I told you like because I did that and I know it didn't work so don't you know puke everything out they might laugh and think you're great and then they're like whoa maybe not <laughs> yeah <laughs> she might like relapse and go nuts um that and then it, the biggest thing is get to know him 
So be my, my, um, recovery mentor always said, be interested instead of interesting. Um, huge. I think you will have, if you continue to, you know, see this person, you will have a chance to be interesting, but it's so much more pleasant. And it's such a, it's such a more exciting experience from, from my, you know, my experiences to be like asking them a lot of questions. And I'm like, okay, you know, that's, it's right. Mm, you know, maybe that doesn't, oops, there's a red flag. Um, you don't know the red flags if you're sitting and talking about yourself the whole time. So huge one. Um, and then, you know, so you, you know, my experience is, um, you know, having the love addiction, the sex addiction stuff and, um, the alcohol and all of these layers from my experience, like I've told you before, I have a sober dating coach, you would say. Um, and here's the thing that. If I, this is also huge. If I have to ask someone if it's a good idea or not, like it's probably not a good idea for someone like me, I need to have a second opinion on things. Um, because if I have these, you know, wild thoughts, it's probably, it's probably if I'm like, um, compulsive, you know, like, Sure. Yeah, I want to sleep with him right now. Like, sure. I probably should ask if that's appropriate um, because those are old ideas creeping in. And so you want to have, you know, a support system that's like, probably not do that. Yep. It's the same thing as sub. <laughs> it's the same thing. It, 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 it's really, it's funny because that really parallels like, I think any other addiction, someone stops drinking alcohol and they're like, Oh, I think it's a good idea. I'm going to celebrate this 4th of July weekend with some alcohol. It's like, well, maybe not, <laughs> maybe you shouldn't celebrate with some alcohol. Maybe we'll just pause on that actually. Cause like you said, it's like you used to do that and that didn't work. So no, that's, that's, that's fast. Okay. So you like, you just said something important. You got a sober dating coach. You're getting coaching with it. And obviously I'm a fan of that. I'm sure you're a fan of that. We both are in our own unique categories of coaching that we offer. Um, I, that's, that's cool. You're, you're getting input on and it. I and I can I, like share a little bit too about what, how she's helping me like a quick thing. Like, so yeah, she, what, yeah. What does it? That's great. Please. Yeah. So she knows my whole history. And so the cool thing is she's also lived it. So she's recovered from, you know, the other things that we've spoken about. So she knows, you know, my whole story and my triggers, all these things. So I have, um, like, you know, healthy things and like not healthy things. And so if I'm, I'm down here, it, it's this, you know, seeking validation or, you know, flirting with men that I'm not interested in, you know, having a long-term relationship with, you know, wearing revealing clothes to get attention or using sex sexual manipulation sure. to get like all of these things, um, that she helps me become more aware of how I've, how I'm acting. Um, and then we have a sober dating plan. So it's, kind of like, um, you know, no pants come unzipped, you know, in the first five dates or mm -hmm. it, it can be for anyone. Um, everyone's mm -hmm. dating plan is different. Um, and things can be, you know, adjusted as well. I think it's just nice to have someone that's like, wait, you know, he literally just said that he drinks every weekend, you know, and likes to do drugs maybe that's a red flag, Catherine. Oh, well, he's, you know, he's nice and he's hot and he's successful. And, you know, he's like, I mean, we could have great sex. It's like, no, you know, because yeah. we get in these like fog thinking and then we're like, wait, <laughs> maybe not. It's, I completely understand. I get, I think a lot of people watching are going to get that. No, I, um, so that was going to be a question for me too. If someone else drinks, are you at, do you know the answer to that? Like, would you date someone else who, who drinks, right? Like a lot of people and, and listen to my viewers, you know, just put the word weed in for alcohol, or if that's your thing, you know, just switch it out. Yeah. Would you? So I actually, my first year of sobriety, I said to myself, I would only date someone in recovery. And now I'm the complete opposite. I 99% yeah. chance I would not date someone in recovery. Um, I actually would prefer a normie. <laughs> so like sure. you have the alcoholics and then you have the normie. Sure. I would prefer a normie. So someone who has a healthy relationship 
quote unquote yes. with alcohol. Like it's just not a thing. It wasn't a, not thing. a thing. It's not a thing. Yeah. Not they a don't... Thing. The reason that is too, is because sometimes people in recovery, that's all they talk about is recovery. Um, yeah. and I have so many other passions that I don't want to talk about recovery and alcohol was just a symptom for me. Like I can be at a nightclub with, this is my experience. So some people can't, I can't, I can be at a nightclub with all of my friends. They are all blacked out. It, it does not affect me zero. Yeah. Um, I've worked a lot, but also alcohol was the, the symptom. So it's quite different for me. You, you, you know, you, you said something that I agree with that I'm very firm on. You said earlier today, you're like, I've recovered from alcohol period, which is I'm done with alcohol. Like I'm good on that. That's, and I, I love that. Cause that's, that's where I'm at in my life with things. Um, and some people are never, that's okay. Some people like to be in an ongoing process of recovery and that's fine too. But and I, here's the thing too, yeah. like so many people, like, I don't know. I don't know if, you know, I was born an alcoholic, I became one and now I'm recovered, but like some people can't even have a mocktail that has lemonade in yeah. a mint leaf in, but uh, that maybe is someone still recovering, but that's not me. Like I, I can have, not not a, yeah. does that make sense? A hundred percent. Yeah. Because, and that's, that, that's how I function in my own life. And that's how a lot of people that I, at least on this channel, that's how we, we kind of operate. So that makes a ton of sense. Yeah. I, I don't know how I got on that. Oh, I was asking you someone to drink. So you answered it. You said, yes, yeah, I would prefer it, someone who is healthy relationship. Like here's for example, like um, I can have alcohol in my home. Like I definitely don't want to date a guy that's, you know, having three glasses of wine a day, but like if we're out for dinner and he wants to have a glass of wine, hell yeah. If we want to go out dancing and yep. he has some drinks, sure. But if he, if you can tell a normie from an alcoholic, if you're, you if you, if you were an alcoholic, you can tell a normie from an alcoholic. So I, red flags, can. I can tell. Yeah. I, I, I think there's something else too about that, that I've seen that sometimes when you have two people dating in recovery, which again, like you said, each their own, whatever, but I agree with you. My, my wife had nothing to do with addiction, um, whatsoever. So that was nice. You know, we didn't have that. Um, but sh here's where I, what was I going to say with that? When you have two people in recovery and I've seen this call my programs, uh, w both of them quit smoking weed, quit drinking alcohol. One person relapses a week later, the next person goes off the cliff. Cause they're like, there went my person, my rock, my foundation. Go to like, Yeah, exactly. And I'm like, no, you were your foundation. Like, I know that's <gasps> like, that sucks. You guys have been married for a long time. And I, I know, like, I know that shook your world, but like, whoa, that never should have been like, it, yeah. So codependency, I, I think that's probably a very common thing if you got two people in recovery for the same stuff, I could see that getting sticky. So I think that's interesting that you're trying to avoid that because there are a lot of like uh, sober dating apps and this and that. And it, it's interesting because it sounds like you're saying, no, I just, when the time is right, you're just going to be out there in the real world, finding the right person without too many. Yeah. And I think too, it's also it. like a, a vibrational thing. So like most alcoholics and addicts they I'm extreme I'm an extreme person like you know my passion for things become obsessive and it's fine like I love my work you can tell I love my yeah. work um so I do think that there's there it would be great to have you know someone who's a little bit more chill <laughs> yeah yeah of course they can turn down the volume on all this they're yeah. like okay everything's okay i'm like ah you know but i can i'm very chill as well but i think that that it's very important to you know broaden your horizons and not you know need to have someone like you you know i think it might could be good you know, yeah yeah that's really really good that's um no, that's great. That, that, that answer. So, all right. We, we covered a lot of things and there's so many different categories that we could go into so many different subtopics. And hopefully we'll talk more about this again in the future. Hopefully people have questions and they ask them because maybe those questions can even lead in the comments to a topic of its own. What is your social media handles? What's your Instagram? What's your TikTok? What's the YouTube website? Where can people find you? Everything's all the same. So Catherine Souser, K A T H. R Y N S A U S E R. Catherine Souser.com, Catherine Souser on TikTok, Catherine Souser on Instagram. Awesome. Um, and same with YouTube. So, uh, yeah, 
same. Everything's the same. Very good. That's we'll pin all of those things in the comments below for anyone who wants more information about either yourself or your programs, whatever it may be. And then Kevin, do you have any other tips for people when it comes to sober dating or dating and addiction or just anything else that you want to throw in there? I want to throw in something a little light and breezy Yeah, that, <laughs> that don't take yourself so seriously. You know, I work with so many women and they beat them. Like, this is exactly how I was. I would, you know, do shameful things and then beat myself up and repeat it. But like, everything is about awareness. And I truly, truly believe that we're doing the best we can with the resources that we have. And until we know better, we can't do better. So through experience, we gather clarity about ourselves, about what we want, about our desires. So like, it's, don't beat yourself up for not being perfect. Just be like, okay, you know, I did that. Now I'm not going to do it again. You know, it's not a big deal. I'm still struggling. Like there's sometimes I say shit and I'm like, oh my God, I shouldn't have said that. But I'm like, you know what? Fine. We're just going to keep, keep it moving forward and have a community. Huge, huge, biggest thing. Community. Talk about this crazy stuff with your friends that are on the same path. <laughs> then you won't feel so crazy. That's really, really, really good advice. I couldn't agree with you more on both of those things. Catherine, thank you so much for this taking the so time fun. to be here. This really was. <laughs> this turned out to be a great conversation. Thank you. Yeah. All thank right. You so I'm gonna much. I'm gonna stop the recording now and then we'll go from there. Thanks. Okay. All right.